even disrespectful. It's like, what do you want? We all watch the game. Speaking of watching it, we watched this guy playing yesterday on the Mark Spain Real Estate Hotline from the Tennessee Titans is Amani Hooker. Amani, congrats on the win. How are you? Thank you. Thanks for having me. Appreciate it. Uh, so yesterday you guys blanked him, and we, we've given the defense a lot of flowers all day. Uh, going in, did you expect it to be more of a challenge than it was, or was it just a game plan? Like, how how did that dominance actually take place yesterday? Um, you know, we didn't want to really focus on, you know, nothing else other than ourselves. Um, last time we went out there against the Patriots, you know, we didn't perform the way we wanted to. Um, so we just want to go out and show ourselves that what we can do and just um, play fast and, you know, just let it loose and make plays, and that's what we ended up doing. Did you feel like Trevor – played the way you were expecting him to play in terms of at least we had heard a couple of, of Titans defenders say look if you can just get him to throw if, if you can he has a tendency to throw the ball early if you get pressure on him so you guys got some pressure on him and he threw it to you four different times yesterday is that, is that kind of what you anticipated if you could make him uncomfortable he would make a couple of mistakes yeah I mean we knew that if we could you know mix up the coverages and if we can get to that middle of the pocket like Nico did the first play that was you know that was great for us to set the tone and Ever since then, you could tell he wasn't really comfortable back there, and um, it helped us out. And you know, going into the game, we wanted to make sure that we could. You know, he is still a rookie, even though it is you know 13 games in, 14 games in. We wanted to change the picture up as far as coverages and stuff, so to make it hard on him, so he had to you know gack the ball here and there. Another thing that you guys did to make it hard on him too was they only had eight rushing yards, and everybody plays a part in that. Uh, D-line, the linebackers, and the secondary. Like, what was the mindset as far as, you know, eight yards is almost unprecedented, but to actually, you know, finish that task right there? Yeah, you know, you know, going into the game, um, actually during the week, I, Jags were saying that, you know, they felt good about the run game. And um, the previous game, they felt like they could run the ball on us. Um, so we took, we took that to the heart. We took that to the chin. So we wanted to come out and try and make a statement that we were going to stop the run early and uh, force Trevor to have to beat us with his arm. That good old bulletin board material right there. Yeah. Um, with, with that being said, too, uh, we saw Byer. Y'all got those two games out of the way with the Jags. Byer said he was laughing as he saw the two Jacksonville Jaguars receiver receivers running into each other. Like, what was the the, the I guess the conversation to be had about what they were doing as an <laughs> offense in their receiving core? Because they really got nothing yesterday. Yeah, I mean, um, as far as matchup wise, we felt like we had the upper hand. Um, you know, some they don't have to give them anything. They could, you know, they end up, you know, like like you said yesterday, they're running the same routes right into each other, so they can end up beating themselves. We don't have to give them anything. Um, we just want to limit all the big plays, um, to stay top down on everything, and just make sure we're tackling. Amani, how how big was the bye week? Just in terms of you got a couple guys back, and I'd love to know the mentality of all of you guys. It's like. You've had so many dudes out. You've been on IR at different times. Everybody has been banged up, it seems like, for this football team this year. What's the mindset? At some point, are you asking questions, say, hey, is this guy going to be back this week, or are you just focused on the ones you're seeing on the practice field and trying to go to war with those guys? Um, yeah, I mean, you just want to just keep going out there and just being, being prepared because you never know who's going to be out there. So, yeah, at least you just want to make sure that you're on your thing, you're, you're doing your job. And whoever's in there next to you, you expect them to do the same thing. That's been the mindset all year. The bye week was huge for us. I mean, it allowed us to reflect on how we played as a whole. Um, and then it allowed us to refresh and get our minds back right and you know, start the new season for us. Uh, what's been the message from Vrabel moving forward, too? Because now everybody's in a uh, – I feel like every week is going to be a playoff game to where teams are going to be trying to position themselves or either, either spoil somebody who is a playoff hopefuls uh, season. Um, what's the message from Brable and the coaching staff as far as moving forward for you guys on the field? Oh, the message was a uh, new season. Um, you know, everything that happened before this point doesn't matter. Um, it's about finishing off this, the regular season, and then we're thinking about the playoffs. So for us, it's you know, we got nine more games left. We don't have you know five, four, or five like some other teams. So we just want to keep digging, keep grinding, and then uh, you know, whoever comes up first, we we just going to take a week after week. Yeah, and you know, obviously, Pittsburgh and then San Francisco, those are two teams that need wins. Obviously, you guys do too, but they're desperate. They they have to stay and keep pace just to make the playoffs. So you guys, I imagine, are going into this recognizing the challenge that lays ahead of you, not just playing another talented NFL team, but playing a team that is, you know, trying to aspire to make the playoffs. Yeah, I mean, you know, they're going to be fired up. They're not going to, you know, obviously, it's going to give up easy, so – 
you know, we just got to make sure we can get on them early, um, take their will early, um, and make them disinterested. If we can do that, then you know, that'll set us up to a position for the rest of the game. And playing your position in the secondary, uh, with the way Trevor Lawrence would turn it over, whether it was hitting off his receiver hands or whatever, four picks yesterday. At what point in the game were you looking like, man, my turn is next? Because you, when you see a guy being that reckless with the ball, you got to say, look, if he throws it in my direction, I'm next on that uh, summer jam on that summer jam screen to get a pick too. Yeah, man, I, I thought I was gonna be next, but it bounced <laughs> off my turf and I dropped it, so that's this opportunity on my side. But um, yeah, guys are flying around though. I mean, we we don't we don't play for you know trying to going out our way to make turnovers. Um, if you just do your job, the plays will come, and that's that's is a you could see that yesterday. The defense is being talked about a lot differently this year than it was being uh, talked about last year, Amani. And uh, we are trying to figure out um, how much does Shane Bowen deserve in terms of just credit for the way that he has kind of uh, kind of moved into this job, taken over the coordinator's role. It just it looks like a bunch of guys that are playing as one, and it's it, it has to be at least some of that has to go to the coordinator. Yeah, uh, Shane's doing a great job. I mean, guys trust him. Um, he listens to the players. Um, if you know, we are obviously think we can do something different. Um, he's open to hearing it. He's not, you know, he's not going to be hard headed. And um, like I said, he believes in guys. He's a fired up guy. He, you know, he doesn't talk down on nobody. Like he's the guy you want to play for. Um, Amani, you are you are still, you know, still a younger guy in this league too. And I'm sure you're in a position though to help kind of guide guys through also. And one of the young guys y'all have playing on your defense right now is Elijah Molden, man. And, you know, what has his process been like with you? Has he been able to lean on you? Have you been able to guide him? Like, because uh, you're as good as probably your youngest guy, or as they say, your weakest link sometimes is getting him up to speed to be a true pro. What has that journey been like for him? He's been having a great year. I mean, smart kid. Um, He's my locker. He's next to me and my locker buddy. So he asked me a whole bunch of questions. We're always talking. Um, but, yeah, he's in tune. He knows what's going on. He knows ball. He loves ball. Um, takes care of his body. I mean, it's just a guy. He's, he's a pro um, just off of year one. So, he's been very impressive, and he's helped us out tremendously, and he helped us out a lot the rest of the year. Well, Monty, congrats on the win. Uh, great stuff, and we look forward to watching what's going to happen over the next month and hopefully you guys playing into February. Yes, sir. Appreciate, Appreciate it, man. Thank you so much for having me. Indeed. Yep. That's Monty Hooker, uh, just one of the studs yesterday. For the Tennessee Titans on defense, twenty to nothing. Yeah, can't wait to ask John Glennon about Zach Cunningham. <laughs> I didn't ask him. We didn't ask Amani about Zach yeah. Cunningham. We didn't want him to storm off the podium. We could have, should have. I almost.